of you were in our previous session on the IRA? Okay, so nobody moved. Okay. <laughs> Got it. So other than Don, we're going to be better. Don was pretty great. Don, no, Don, but Don's yes. still here. Aaron. Yes. Don's still here. Well, no, he's yeah. not. We're going to ignore him. <laughs> All right. Everyone, thank you so much for, our pan for coming to the panel on the update on the Regional Hydrogen Hubs Program. Um, we were really hoping that um, by today we would be able to announce uh, who the hub winners were. And we're gonna, we'll talk a little bit about the program. How many of you are familiar with the Hydrogen Hubs program? Okay, so um, not everybody. So um, before we introduce everyone, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a background. So in the bipartisan infrastructure law that passed two Augusts ago, there was $9.5 billion included uh, for hydrogen in that legislation. Eight billion of that was included for hydrogen hubs across the United States. And uh, those hubs were, there was some designation of what they could look like. And so I'm gonna simplify it, but there were supposed to be hubs, there could be up to eight to 10 hubs, and you had to have a green hub, you had to have a pink hub. Does everybody, everybody in this room knows what pink, right? Okay, good. Um, we don't really use colors, but in that context, it's kind of fun. Um, and then also some natural gas uh, states as well, and then the room for other uh, hubs to come along. And so I'm gonna introduce our guests here today because we have the best of the hubs here. Now, don't tell anyone I said that I'll because... <laughs> But again, I don't think, uh, again, Aaron Lane, Vice President of Public Affairs for Plug, and Jerry? Uh, Jerry Conway, I'm the General Counsel, as well as the EVP for, uh, uh, for Government Affairs. So. Okay, so I'm going to have our guests introduce themselves, and um, as you introduce yourself, I would love for you to just take one minute and describe your position, and then also your uh, engagement in the hub that you're engaged in, and why you're a winner. All right. Uh, well, I'm Mitch Carmichael. I have the privilege of being the Cabinet Secretary for Economic Development in West Virginia. Just previous to that, I was uh, Senate President in West Virginia, Lieutenant Governor. And uh, so uh, that's my position. That's my role. I'm also the Chairman of the April Appalachian Regional Hub Arch 2 uh, Work Group. Um, and uh, as Aaron m mentioned, the reason we, I believe we will be a winner, in fact, you say that it's not been announced today, but the day's not over. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we would hope uh, to be in a position to win that. A couple of these uh, hubs are designated in natural gas areas. West Virginia is completely comprised, the only state in America completely comprised within the uh, Appalachian Regional Commission. Uh, we're the second largest uh, gas producing region in America. And we have, a, and I'll talk about this later, a very historic orientation towards energy production. Uh, most of you are aware of the, you know, the, uh, how strong West Virginia is and what West Virginia has done from an energy production standpoint throughout the history of our country. Uh, we have the muscle memory on how to do these uh, uh, roles and tasks and jobs, and we're very excited about the opportunity to uh, continue to power the nation with the next generation of renewable energy. Thanks very much. Uh, afternoon, everyone. My name is John Lochner. I'm Vice President of Innovation at NYSERDA here in New York. Uh, the innovation portfolio includes all the work that we're doing in clean fuels, uh, including a comprehensive road mapping of the use of hydrogen across industries and sectors in the state, uh, as well as related policy and economic development road mapping work. Uh, and we also uh, we're the team leading the hub. I'm the executive sponsor of, of our hub. Our hub consists of seven Northeast states working together um, to develop what we hope DOE sees as, as compelling, uh, which is you know what they said they want, which is a competitive national ecosystem for hydrogen. And so the seven states coming together, we already have integrated fuels markets and networks. We have integrated transportation infrastructure and working together at the governor's office level as well as the regulatory level uh, and, and across the different organizations in the states that are relevant to energy. 
uh, we have been trying to align and streamline what we can to support that industry here. Can't quite work this. Okay. All right. Uh, you know, we do have some folks in this room from Plug who have spent a lot of time on uh, working with the hub applicants. And so I ever want everyone to say hi to Doug McLean because he loves getting called out like this. <laughs> Uh, and Carter right here, who is from our government affairs team, and, and both of them have spent a lot of time thinking about... Oh, did I turn it off? You hit the black button there. Yes. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> okay. I'm actually going to just put that down, because I think that um, we're going to... Um, and so I'm just... Before we... Um, ask a few more questions. I want to dig in a little bit more on, on the hubs uh, really quickly. So we mentioned the Bipartisan um, Energy Infrastructure Act. And so how these things work, and many of you know, is um, Department of Energy put out a call for papers, concept papers, to bring groups together who thought that they could compete to be part of the hub's activities. The DOE received 79 applications from different groups across the country. Uh, I think that there was an application from at least every state, including Alaska and Hawaii, and many of the states came together. And so out of those 79 concept papers, 33 of the groups were asked to put in full applications. Now, it's really important to mention how difficult it was to put together these applications. And they're smiling right now, but I have to tell you um, the appreciation that we have for these uh, two groups for putting them together, because it was a lot of work. Not only um, is it a lot of paperwork, um, just bringing together partners that would allow for the best application possible. And then there were other things that were in the uh, applications that I think were really important to think about too, is um, community partnerships. Yeah. Um, you know, making sure that you are doing the best that you can. So I just, um, if you don't mind just taking a, a second to um, explain as those applications were putting together, some of the things you can't really dig into, we all have NDAs about what's in the application, but some of the things that you focused on and you felt made your state and your application and your level of commitment to hydrogen put you in a place where you were excited about what you put forward. So I'll start with John and then Jerry, um, I'd love to get your input too after these guys are done as sort of a plug perspective on some of the things that you thought were um, work, working well. Yeah, and thank you. Um, New York has a, a long history of electrification and when we passed our climate law a few years ago, it really required us to think holistically about decarbonizing the economy. And there are a number of places that are very hard to electrify and where hydrogen in particular presents a great opportunity for us to, to meet our decarbonization goals. And a lot of those areas, medium and heavy duty transportation, industry and others, align well with a lot of our environmental justice stakeholders' interests. Uh, getting PM 2.5 out of transportation, downstate in particular as one issue, uh, reliability and resilience of microgrids is another. And so we really tried to focus on supporting the needs of environmental justice and the stakeholder community in New York State and across the Northeast while using this as an opportunity to educate and communicate with those folks a lot more than you know traditionally we have in hydrogen. We just started maybe about two years ago thinking at the scale I think we currently are uh, about the role that hydrogen can play in the state. So I think that's that's a key piece of what we're doing. You know, the other piece that New York really thinks about a lot is we've got some upstate hydro assets that are incredibly valuable from an economic development perspective for us and as well as to produce a, a clean fuel um, that can help us with our decarbonization efforts. So those are those are just a few of the things I think that, that really drive what we're hoping to do and, and the role that we're playing. And, and again, thinking about clean green hydrogen. We also don't like to use colors increasingly, but uh, the name of the game for us is certainly clean, uh, and electrolyzers are certainly the, the main focus of what we do. 
Yep. Well, thank you, John. And then uh, from West Virginia's perspective, we partnered and have reached out with over 160 different entities from university groups uh, to different stakeholders to labor organizations, workforce uh, entities to uh, comprise a uh, holistic approach to how we uh, provide the next generation of energy in West Virginia and in the surrounding region. Because it is so important, as you know, uh, as the country makes this energy transition, it is vitally important not to leave any area behind. The people that will be uh, most affected by the shift from an energy production standpoint are in this region. And so to the extent that we can make sure that those areas, uh, the ones that you know I represent and others, are brought along with this next generation of energy and, uh, and become the best advocates for the policy. That was our uh, real goal and our focus. And I think we'll achieve that with uh, the, the historic workforce that we have in the area, the training uh, programs that we're bringing forth, and the ability to track attract and retain new industries uh, that will utilize the hydrogen. And so we're very excited about the opportunity to uh, take this next step, but we absolutely have to uh, be included at the table and make sure that we are a part of the energy solution. And it's, you know, it's so vitally important. I'll just give you an example real quick, Aaron, as, uh, and we talk about, you know, a clean green economy. And the county I live in, and just many of you probably have the same uh, backgrounds. You know, my father was a steel worker, worked at an aluminum plant that shut down because the energy costs were too high. Now, uh, Berkshire Hathaway has uh, put a microgrid on that same property and will be powering the next generation of a titanium manufacturing plant. And so when you see the rebirth of an industry and of the jobs and of the community, you become very excited and it becomes very personal uh, because, you know, we all, I knew everybody that got laid off at this plant and lost their jobs and left the area. This is an opportunity for our state and our region to take that next step and to be a part of this uh, exciting revolution that's occurring in, uh, in America. And, and I just add, I, we've been competing uh, up until hopefully any minute now or any hour now. Um, but, but we've also, and, and I think Plug made the original introduction between our hubs, uh, the goal is for a national ecosystem and the politics may be different in different places and the benefits may be different in different places, but at the end of the day, we're all looking for reliable, affordable energy and that matters to all of our constituents uh, in every state, I can tell you, in the Northeast and I'm, I'm sure more generally, yeah. <laughs> So um, maybe just to give a little perspective, you know, why is Plug uh, uh, involved in the in the hub activity? Um, you know, obviously hydrogen hubs. We're in the hydrogen business, so um, uh, it, that's pretty obvious. But um, y as you walked in, you know, we're in the the profitability um, uh, uh, sector here. This is the the um, profitability room, and um, you know. We're involved in the hubs not to sell our stuff to the government, right? That is not the objective of our participation in the hubs. Um, the various hub applications that we're a part of, um, we take different roles. Um, you know, some in some we have minor roles to p perhaps be a supplier. Some we have uh, more active roles. Um, but the reason, the real reason why we're involved in the hub activity is uh, there's a couple reasons. One is uh, to continue that. Um, spirit of partnership. I mentioned if you guys were in the last session, we look and have looked from our inception at, at, at the government as, as partners of ours. And we work with them uh, and have historically, and we look at this as an opportunity to work with states, you know, continuing on with New York, but you know, it, it really has opened up a great relationship with West Virginia. And so, you, you know, it's interesting to have New York and West Virginia, two somewhat different states sitting next to each other, competing against each other, but also collaborating with each other. And so, you know, we want to be a part of that. Um, this building that you're in, for example, uh, is the result of a partnership with many government organizations from the count Albany County to the state of New York um, uh, to the federal government that actually um, was able to provide some funding to, to help us build this. So, you know, it, it's, we're not looking to sell electrolyzers, you know, to, to, you know, with government funding. What we're trying to do is make sure that this ecosystem that John mentioned is rolled out in, a, in an appropriate way and takes advantage of the different resources, whether it's in West Virginia, um, 
with the infrastructure and the workforce that you have there. Uh, New York, which is, uh, we're take, trying to take advantage of all the hydro that, um, you know, uh, we, we think it is it should be part of 45V, for example, um, to places that, you know, out in California, um, you know, it really should be a national effort. And if it's not, um, it's potentially not going to work, right? So we're as involved in this as much for trying to ensure what doesn't happen <laughs> as we are for what does. So um, this could go very wrong. Uh, it, you know, early on we, we, were, we raised some concerns with the Department of Energy. And it, it really needs to be, you know, we need to be thoughtful about how this is, is implemented and how this is rolled out. Um, these, the decision is imminent, maybe today we would be hopeful about that. We think it's going in the right direction. Um, but this is just a piece of the hydrogen puzzle that Andy talked about in the beginning that we talked about with um, the IRA. The IRA is just another piece of this. And, um, you know, that's why we're involved. So. Yeah. I just, um, I, I can't echo enough what Jerry said is the, um, the potential for the hydrogen hubs to be helpful in building out the ecosystem across the United States is huge. Um, but there are concerns, and it is directly related to the pragmatic rules that need we need to see for the 45V tax credit. And so um, we we do, and we have talked to each of your hubs about this. And, and John, I'm going to start with you. Um, I know that you've thought quite a bit about this and um, have engaged, and the, the hub did a letter um, talking about the need to get the rules right to make sure that you're successful in moving forward. Yeah, and, and actually the letter came from the seven states that are part of the Northeast Hub. Um, uh, there was that much, I think, concern and interest in making sure that, that uh, the White House Treasury and DOE understood our position. And, and our position is, you know, and, well, let me start with New York State. We have more than 20 plus gigawatts of needed firm capacity, clean firm capacity needed to make our decarbonization efforts work. And we don't have that many options to, to do so. And so we need to take advantage of those that we see as maturing at the appropriate time and having the type of applications and, and cost effectiveness potential, right, that we need. Um, so when we looked at the three pillars and we looked at the challenges that we would have um, implementing those and ensuring that we had the type of economic development and hydrogen supply that we needed, we were very concerned and, and then sent letters, had conversations and, and continue to follow up to make sure that the approach is something that can help us get to our goals. And Mitch, I'm gonna certainly let you speak, but I, I think um, I would be remiss if I didn't mention that um, the senator from the great state of West Virginia has certainly been a, a, a very important voice in all of these discussions and, and really ensuring the working with the White House and others to make sure these rules go correctly. Well, and he absolutely has, and we appreciate that. And I want to point out one of the things that are uh, or components of the IRA bill that makes West Virginia a golden place to locate uh, the ecosystem for a hydrogen hub are all the set-asides that are within the IRA bill for coal-affected communities. You know, if you're if someone's listening online, or if you're a uh, you know a manufacturer of a uh, of any uh, component that fits in the ecosystem, uh, you can locate in one of the coal affected communities and obtain DOE set aside money and different uh, advantages uh, because of those uh, things that I talked about earlier. We are not, this area is going to either lead. Uh, or be left behind. And that is not uh, a scenario that we're willing to accept. You know, we want to be a part of the solution. We're going to be very aggressive uh, in providing state incentives as well. But those DOE set-asides are incredibly important for the manufacturing and the ecosystem uh, of the hydrogen uh, economy. So uh, uh, that's, that's a very important element, and Senator Manchin's been very helpful. And the governor as well. So yes. we really appreciate that. And, you know, we are so lucky. I think luck was brought up a little while earlier. I mean, we, we've worked hard. And I, I will never um, take away from the level of effort we've put into um, working with our government partners. But to have the support of Senator Manchin, have the support from the majority leader, the, uh, the governor of New York, uh, Senator Gillibrand, whose staff is here today, thank you. I, I am not sure that I can even mention all of those who have partnered with us and helped us along the way. 
uh, and we continue to work together, and we're, we're very thankful and hopeful that we can make sure that this all goes well. Um, but it was important for us to mention it because it is tied together, and the federal government um, did some really big things for hydrogen, and they all need to work to help us be successful, and now is our time. So unless you guys have anything else, I'm going to turn it over to the crowd for questions. Jerry, you have anything else? No. Great. All right. Come on, give us some tough ones. I mean, I can just say one thing. The way the application was laid out and the first two years of, of development of the projects is laid out, there is um, ample time still to take into account what the market's going to look like as these projects actually get developed. Um, not all of the pieces that uh, are required to think about building the project and the, and the end costs and the financing were required to be locked in at, at the time of application. That's a good point. He, uh, I think, summarized that correctly. And then, um, you know, there's a 50% non-federal match, and no matter what, uh, the cost ends up being. So uh, you're right, there is an inflationary environment, and the developers will have to be aware. Yeah. I wasn't in the room, but I can make a I can make a guess, and I would love all four of us to to make um, an opinion on this. I do think that they again, once again, they took a very thoughtful approach. I do think that there were certain goals in mind. There were statutory um, things that they needed to to deal with, and that was in the legislation. And also, once again, to reiterate this idea of that you're going to build out the hydrogen network throughout the country, and so hopefully. Um, the hubs will all be able to connect at some point um, through a delivery system, and that we will be able to maximize uh, the hydrogen economy. Yeah, and I think statutorily, uh, some of the hubs are allocated to particular uh, mechanisms, uh, whether it be electrolysis, uh, natural gas, nuclear. Um, and so I think, obviously, those were factors in the decision-making process. And I, and I just add one other thing. I, I can't recall whether it was 20 or 25 percent of the scoring was specifically around community engagement and environmental justice engagement and that obviously very important for for New York and the states we're working with too and maybe just to, uh, one final thing um, and to be direct some of it is political um, uh, I just you can't you know ignore that um, some of that political element is actually baked into the underlying authorizing statute um, but, you know, I do think that the DOE is looking at, um, you know, how do they build out this, this hydrogen network? Um, you know, we've sort of equated it in our conversations uh, with them with uh, the interstate highway system and, um, you know, taking that same approach and, you know, going broad. But you need to, you know, address partic particular needs in different parts of the country and take advantage of, as I mentioned before, the unique um, – uh, attributes, you know, whether you're in California versus West Virginia, you know, t two different approaches to how you may um, build out the hydrogen uh, uh, network. Um, one of the things we have woven into this conversation is that this is all related, and so um, hubs are not separate from uh, the IRA, and, um, you know, we've tried to be very clear that if you, essentially, if you screw up implementation of Section 45V, you're not gonna get what you think you're gonna get out of the hubs. Um, the hubs are gonna fail, and I think was uh, Don might have mentioned this, you're gonna drive uh, hydrogen production to very small slices of the United States, which is not really the overall intent of, of, of IRA. Years, 
<laughs> Question of the hour. <laughs> that, that's our point, is, is you need to be thoughtful about you know, weaving this all together in a way that makes sense. So if you, if you have requirements under the, the, the hub and legislation to do certain things in certain parts of the country using certain technologies, and then you, you know, take a different approach that's, that's contrary to um, uh, that, that intent with 45V, um, essentially you're gonna create a situation where nobody knows what to do. And so, you know, back to the point we made earlier in the last session, you know, driving investment and dri creating jobs, reducing, um, you know, emissions, um, you know, investment in clean technology, you're going to negate all of that because people are just going to sit on the sidelines while, while the government figures out which way they're supposed to be going. So, you know, it has to be consistent. And to, I, and to be fair, we, um, it, there have been, lots of conversations with different groups with the administration trying to work that particular issue out. Where it lands, we don't know, but we can only really emphasize the importance of getting it right. Yes, yes. quickly. quickly. <laughs> um, is it a follow-up or no? Okay, okay. Do you mind introducing yourself? Oh, sorry, uh, Henry Roberts, Ventura. Great. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, necessarily any of the blue hydrogen will require um, carbon capture and sequestration. So it is a vital component, and that is a, uh, uh, you know, some of the DOE set-asides, again, are for uh, research development and testing of those, uh, of that technology. And so uh, it is a, an element of the ARCH-2 application, uh, the CCS. So um, it has been uh, you know, uh, thoughtfully approached, uh, and there is a uh, mechanism in place to provide it. In fact, West Virginia has gone so far as to uh, provide um, some funding for uh, uh, Fidelis New Energy. I'm not sure from everything, but they uh, uh, are purporting to be able to, uh, to perform carbon capture and sequestration, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did say to you all that I wasn't gonna be able to mention all of the people to thank, but I do need to make sure that I mention that Congressman Tonko, who represents a VISTA facility, and then um, Congressman Morelli, who represents us in Rochester, um, and others throughout the state have been amazing, and I just, uh, I can't get caught on those. Okay, um, one last question. Go ahead. Um, can you explain the mechanics of what happens in the hardware launch? When the first tank is coming to town, what you have to show before the second tank is coming, and what the timeline is like? John, I'm gonna give that one to you because you're really involved in that first phase. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I'm gonna be able to give you uh, the exact detail. Um, uh, but the first 24 months are continued development of the projects and meeting specific milestones for DOE um, for those projects to continue development. Um, and so we expect to be, uh, if we win, uh, we expect to be in negotiations with DOE over exactly what they expect at, at exactly what point. But I, I believe over the first uh 24 months, it's it's not more than a few tens of millions of dollars that get uh, allocated for the projects. This slide that you see up here, um, it, and these all these slides will be made available. This is a Department of Energy slide that um, they had put out from day one, which really outlines what those phases are going to look like. Okay, one minute left. Go ahead. But what happens, plan B, uh, your West Virginia or New York doesn't happen? Are they, is it, will it be an easy phase? What happens to the region? What do you do? 
Well, we're moving forward. I mean, we want uh, to win. Obviously, we've put a lot of effort into it. We hope uh, we share this with our, our good friends in New York. There's lots of great applications, but we're, uh, you know, our our goal is to provide jobs, opportunity, growth, and prosperity for our citizens. And uh, you know, we're intent on delivering that. I think clean energy is a vital component of doing that, of achieving that goal. And so uh, we'll we'll continue on the path. But uh, this would sure be a help. <laughs> Yeah, and the same for New York, I would say, in addition, we have our climate law, which requires us to decarbonize. And so, you know, to, to us, winning a, a hub allows us to accelerate here and, and allows us to, I think, um, get the attention and focus of many more constituents at one point and, and move them forward more quickly. But we still have to do the same work. What a great question to end on. All right, well, uh, thank you all. We really appreciate uh, you spending time with us today. And again, we're around for questions, but um, any specific hub questions go to Carter and to Doug <laughs> and, um, and, and our folks up here on the panel. So thank you all and have a great day and please enjoy the rest of our sessions. I, I understand the sessions from our CTO office are gonna be the next best.